What's up, guys? This is Revenge of the Jocks, and I'm your host, Marty. And right now, I'm sitting down with Lauren Burchard, who's one of my favorite guys in the world. He's also the Emmy um, winner for Best Animated um, Show, Fox Burgers. Mm -hmm. And um, you got a new show, Central Park, that's about to drop soon. Mm -hmm. um, just a creative guy who who's here to talk burgers. What's the perfect burger? Mm. All right, I have a perfect burger in, in for me. Yes. You know, everyone has to, you know, answer yeah, that question I, for themselves. Yes, I agree. I really like a little bit of sweet. So me and my kids have come up with our perfect burger, which is two quarter pound patties. Okay. Cheese. So that that makes a half pound, right? Yeah, it okay. makes a big burger. <laughs> and <laughs> bacon and pineapple, grilled pineapple and a brioche bun. Perfect for brioche us. bun is the only way to go. Yeah, brioche bun is the only way to go. For me, I kind of like that sweet as well, but I like the sweet to come from barbecue sauce. Yes. I love the bacon. I like to do bison if I can mm -hmm. as, the, as for the patty. It has to have a fried onion ring on it. I do like a fried onion yeah, ring. Yeah, fried onion yeah. ring is just delicious. Yeah. Lettuce, tomatoes, all the normal stuff right there. I'm not a mayo guy. No. And I think every burger needs to start by being cut in half. Huh, interesting. What's your favorite part of being a dad? My wife and I are really in love with our kids, and we've been really uh, enjoying the ride a lot. Uh, this is my, the best project that I've ever been a co-executive producer on. That's great. You're, yeah, I think that's a great Raising way kids. to look at it. Yeah, I don't know the best part. The best part is just that it's uh, always you know kicks your ass and surprises you and makes you realize how you aren't as in control as you think you are, and you yeah. have to just like be on your toes and like. You got to kind of commit to being better. You you know, the second you lose your temper or do something crabby and cranky and you like, you know it. Like my favorite thing is like when my daughter is experiencing things for the first time, mm -hmm. being able to really be present is one thing I, I've learned the most about being a dad. As a father, how does, is there similarities between you and Bob? Ha, <laughs> probably. We definitely try to put into the show the idea that these two people love their kids what is the writer's room like because usually i write everything by myself so i am the writer's room <laughs> writer's room is a special thing it's like a like a pack of dogs that <laughs> just like love um you know sniffing each other's butts writers are very 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 tuned into each other they can move as a as one organism yeah or then you know splinter off depending on what what's right for the moment this is also a group of people who've been together a long time. Yeah. So some of what I'm describing is not just a writer's room, and it's not just the Bob's room, but it's the Bob's room eight years in. I mean, there's just nothing like that. You know, that's that's a very intimate relationship because we, you know, spend several hours. It's like football. It's like a locker room. Yes. It's like you become family with these guys because you actually end up spending more time with them than you do with your family on a normal basis. Yeah. So everybody knows fucked up shit about. Everybody each... knows who pooped their pants and when. Why did you want music to be such a? A huge part of the show. Or did it just become that? Both. Yeah. I wanted it to, and I was afraid to do it. I think with Bob's, we, I felt like we were right on the edge of, of you know, being able to do it in the beginning, but it was, it was, it felt like a leap to yeah. like make a new end credits every episode or to put songs into the show. I wasn't sure if I could do it as a songwriter or um, if the cast could do it as singers. Yeah. We had this a little bit of fear. So it, it was always this urge. And then we just started giving into it. And the fans let us know yeah. that they were, they were okay with our experiment. Here's a question for you. If you could have a burger with any three people of any time, who would it be? Oh, you were part of the last sporting event, maybe the first and last sporting event that made me cry. Which was that? Uh -huh. um, the 20, super, yeah, the Patriots Super Bowl. You know that was that comeback yeah. was incredible. Yeah, I cried too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it was incredible. <laughs> Winning a Super Bowl, uh, we experienced that as Patriots fans. But that Super Bowl was really special. Yeah. I mean, a comeback. The biggest one in the history. Yes, of everything is like it's the most thrilling thing. Yeah. To watch. Um. So, so you're on the list. Oh, thank you. I think I, I think I'm a great guy to have a burger with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I don't know who else. I'm interested in knowing what Tim Burton is like. Mm. Obama seemed like a great yeah, person. That's man. a good one. Yeah, yeah um, he just seemed like he has great conversation. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. I yeah. want to pretend I said that. I like to eat with the two guys from um, uh, Property Brothers. <laughs> 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 I like the things where you could control the outcome. Yeah. 
right? Because you could control things with your work ethic. Like football, you could work as hard as you want, as much as you want, work on your craft, and you still may go in the game and only get one pass. Yeah. Luck is is always in the story. You know, if you look back, you can see the spots at which you caught a break. Yeah. You, yes, you applied yourself. Yes, you were hardworking. Yes, you made some of your own opportunities, but like you still had to get lucky. Preparation meets opportunity. Yeah. So like I think all the work you get when that, you get lucky, that opportunity pops up, but you prepare for it. Because yeah. a lot of times people, there's lucky moments that may happen to people or they're right there that the universe puts in front of you, but you're not prepared for right. it, so you can't seize the moment. That's right. My parents put all these Disney movies on when we were falling asleep. My sister and I would go to sleep listening to the record of Snow White or the record of Pinocchio or the record of... So I think that's also why I... Have a good ear. Well, I approach animation as if it's audio first. My boss always said, hire bartenders. Yeah. And I was a bartender. Uh, he was he hired me. And he always thought, and I agreed, bartenders and the waiters and waitresses will thrive in production because to them, they've already been working in that environment for yeah. years. Just like, oh, yeah, of course it gets really, really busy. And of course you have to be able to handle a bunch of things at once. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas I think kids coming out of college who studied animation or you know art school, who didn't have that work experience, they weren't bringing anything besides their training. They had yeah. to sort of learn how to be a person, yeah. you know, and how to work in a company on the on the on the fly. If I have an idea for a show, like where do I start? Yeah, I think there's like probably ultimately three things. You want your idea to be good and original and somehow unique in the world. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a wholly unique. In fact, if it's too original, it's it may yeah. it'll, it'll throw people off. So you want you need your content. You need your your thing. I think second, your passion for that thing has to be real. You are positive that you should bring this thing into the world yeah. and that you're excited to do it. And if somebody gives you the opportunity, you'll. Crush it. Crush it. Yeah. And 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 do it for years. And I would say the last thing is sort of related to the passion. It's I think it's leadership in a funny way. If we're talking about animation, yeah. you're talking about an intensely collaborative media. I think there are smart, talented people out there who can't do the last part. Yeah. They can't see past their notebook. Yeah. So they have the idea, they have the passion, but this is a collaborative industry. You can't be a crazy genius who just writes everything and draws everything and does all the music and yeah. edits it. You'll die. You have to be excited about the challenge of organizing a big group of people to come and do it with you. Couple hundred people probably all told make Bob's Burgers. Really? Yeah. I'm fucking up. I got six people over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like organizational savvy and um, desire to to do it to like move the pieces around and and think about it combined with heart.